So if I go back on over here, I can mirror that on my schedule A and I could say, okay, they owned a home. So 14,000 mortgage interest. I'm gonna say I'm just making numbers up and property taxes, 4,000. And that means they're more likely to be able to take the medical expenses. Let's see if we could do a little worksheet on the medical expenses. I'm gonna add some info here. I'm gonna add a couple rows. I'll do this fairly quickly because it's not an Excel course, but I'm gonna insert. And then let's say we had we had medical expenses. Let's let's add a couple lines that we can add different medical expenses. Boom, boom. And then I'm gonna add a couple more rows here. Insert a couple more rows. And then I'm gonna format those this way right now. And that's gonna be so that'll be the total uh total medic medical expenses and so we put here how much did we put ten thousand and so let's sum it up equals the sum of those and then we've got the 7.5 uh floor well let's 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 put in our agi so the agi i'm going to say is pulling over from the 1040 which in our case is a hundred thousand so there's the agi and then i'm going to say there's a 7.5 percent floor which is going to be equal to this times 0.075 and so it has to clear that and so then we're going to say medical medical and dental expenses on the outer side which is going to equal equal this minus the floor so i know i did that fairly quickly but you can see the idea of ten thousand is going in and then we're going to pull in our agi from our formula and then we're going to say there's a floor of 7.5 percent of the agi so ten thousand minus that floor that's the deductible portion that should then pull in as part of our itemized deductions and then we also have the state taxes that i'm going to let the system calculate on the schedule a which they're getting to the 1017 so i'm going to say okay 1017 that adds up to the 21517 which ties out 21517 pulls on to the first page of the 1040 so there's the 21517 bringing the taxable income to 78483 so pulling that over and so now it's taking the greater of the itemized or standard 21,517 and there's the 78,483 78,483 I won't go to the second page and do the tax calculation because that we're mainly focused uh, up here on the medical expenses now of course if we if we were saying that they were married that threshold goes a lot higher so if we said they were married, if I went back on over and said, of course, that they were married, then the, and I kept everything else the same. Now I'm only, I'm still only taking the standard deduction because that's a quite high threshold and we haven't cleared that threshold here. So that would be that. And so let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to single then and go to single booms so we have to keep in mind all the time that standard deduction when we're thinking about these itemized items now also note that if you're including stuff in uh, a medical expense some questions that often come up is if, if you look at a w-2 form for example you might say hey look box six medicare tax withheld sounds like a medical related item and i paid for it because my employer my employer attempted to inject it with poison withheld it through the payroll taxes and then paid it directly to the government therefore i should get a deduction for the medicare tax withheld on box six here uh for the schedule a medical expenses but you don't typically get to include this in the medical expenses on schedule a the medicare tax withheld for the payroll taxes i think in part because the Medicare tax was originally thought of as not actually paying directly into your insurance premiums, but instead as, as like a safety net type of program. Although as time has passed, it looks more like you are kind of paying directly into 
uh, your insurance premiums, but you don't typically get to deduct that on the Schedule A. The other kind of confusing thing would be most of the time or a lot of the time people have their, their uh, premiums for insurance tied in with their employer. So you've got to say, I can't deduct my premiums if they've already been accounted for on the W-2. In other words, if box one, my wages that are, are in place with regards to my federal income tax has already been reduced by the payments for the, for the, uh, for the health plans or health expenses of some kind, then I can't also take a deduction on the Schedule A because they basically have already been reduced before we even record the income on the 1040. And you can look at some of these items because they'll be listed down here oftentimes in box uh, 12B. So we saw this same kind of concept with relation to like putting money into a 401k plan, for example. That's why you might have differences between box one and box five, for example, which are both recording the wages, but you might have some wages up top in box one that are, that, that are reduced by say the 401k plan and possibly like a cafeteria plan or something uh, that so, so they've already reduced the income, whereas some of that might not be reduced in the Medicare uh, uh, wages on box five. So you want to you want to keep that into consideration as well. If you paid it through your work, was it already accounted for on the W-2, then you, you'd be double dipping if you also deduct, deducted it on the Schedule A. The other thing to just keep in mind here is that, and that's beneficial oftentimes if, if you can get that benefit on the W-2 and get it through your employer, because then of course, if it's reduced from box one, even if you're not itemizing, then you've already reduced kind of your income as opposed to be, being only getting a benefit if it was itemizing and being subject to that 7.5% limitation. Why limitations? We are addicted to our own limitations. Uh, before you get a benefit. Also note, that we talked about if you're self-employed that you might have this self-employed health insurance uh, in some cases here that you could possibly deduct if you have a schedule c sole proprietorship type of business so again if you deduct it here then you can't deduct it on the schedule a and this would often be more beneficial to deduct it here if you're able to because then you don't have to itemize once again you don't have that floor of 7.5 percent of the agi that you do with relation to the schedule a so that's mainly it so if i go back in here on the schedule a to, with regards to the just to recap it with the medical and dental expenses it's not usually the first thing that kicks you over to being itemizing it's usually the ownership of the home with the interest and the taxes related to the ownership of the home, unless there's like a big thing that happened. There's also that 7.5% limitation. That's a floor that you have to clear before you even get any benefit from it at all. And then you've got to be careful on the categorization, what types of things are included. We went through a, a bigger list when we saw the prior presentation, but you also want to make sure that you're not double dipping anywhere. In other words, did you get a benefit from it? Uh, in some other in some other location such as it was it was already decreased fr from the w2